Well, in other uh, development, airports and air navigation services providers in the United Kingdom, South Africa, European Union, Ethiopia, and United States may have concluded plans to increase their charges by at least 950 billion naira. At a time when the aviation industry is struggling to recover from the pandemic, this sounds scary. To help understand why this possibility is coming up at this time, we have consultant in the aviation industry and managing partner in Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited, Mr. Tayo Ojuri, joining us for this conversation. Good to have you, Mr. Ojuri. Good morning. Good happy morning to you. So why do we have this? I would have thought that the prices or costs will be, you know, being tapered so that we will have more travels and the industry will recover faster. Yes, uh, this absolutely will stall travel and it would actually uh, forestall inter travel inter interconnectivity within travel uh, sector. But what we've seen is COVID le le loss of the uh, airlines, the airports, the air service navigation providers, they lost so much money. And the bottom line, they want to recoup the money that they've lost in the, in the last few years, a year or two. Because if we backtrack this, we saw that aviation was the first to get hit in March 2019. And we got closed down totally uh, for over six to eight months before we started uh, coming back. Even till now, we still have lots of travel restrictions across countries. So we don't have lots of opening up across uh, intercontinental. We see the trends where we see national uh, travel pick up, but the international and continental travel has not picked up yet. Mm -hmm. For example, we just seen U uh, U.S. open travel to Europe. Yeah. which is the biggest uh, travel market intercontinental to, uh, just in you know, October, November. That's going to start. You know, we still see uh, China restricting lots of the traffic to, to, um, to people coming there. So we still have lots of tra uh, restrictions for travel. So what should be done for all the service providers and the airports so that they're not showing that they're monopolistic uh, in their approach is to actually have uh, uh, like re reduce the, their cost and be actually receptive and dynamic with working with the airlines and other uh, travel uh, service providers. Okay, so please help us to understand, is this just about Nigeria? Uh, what does it mean? Flights going from Nigeria to these countries, to Europe, to UK, they have to pay more for the services, which of course we know eventually the consumer will have to pay for. But help us to understand the scenario, is it that when they go there, they ha the charges are, would have increased or what? Yes. Uh, so particularly we have uh, in Europe, Amsterdam is looking at a increasing 30%. Um, Heathrow, is, which is a major hub, is looking at a re increasing by about 2.3 billion, uh, 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 increasing the charges next year. And air service providers, which are navigational services, if you're flying in the aircraft, you pay for as you go through each country. So you're paying, and that charge is going to increase. And European Union, each a travel air navigational tra service provider is owned by the government and they're looking at increasing their charges over the next two to three years. That's going to be incremental cost to travel. And the tickets, which you rightly said, that the passenger will pay. But is this the time we need to increase the tickets where the, we're still grappling with lots of challenges and trying to in, uh, actually uh, make the travel... Uh, public more attractive. Uh, more attractive. Exactly. There's lots of travel hesitancy. We have actually been. Uh, we, we're still grappling with that. We have lo lots of people still not uh, opening up to travel yet. Apart from that, technology has been uh, has, has actually been uh, embraced <laughs> yes, as a form a lot of, of meetings. meetings and events are being held exactly. virtually now. So we we still have to make sure we're actually embracing people, uh, make travel attractive, and put the price down. So let's bring that to Nigeria. Nigeria, we've seen the travel market bosom in the last few uh, domestic quarters, yes. in, the, in the last two, three quarters. But the international has actually been challenged. Why so? We have about $143.8 million being trapped within Nigeria for obvious reasons. We don't have forex, forex to actually fund the money for international tickets that have been bought in Nigeria for the international airlines to remit their money back to the country because they don't need all those funds for the tickets sold here to be used in Nigeria. So th this money needs to be remitted back to their home countries for their operations to take over loans for, their, uh, uh, for other things. But we actually have that money stuck here. 
That's for international players. Now for the domestic, we have challenges of sourcing foreign exchange for our domestic corporations. Yes, we see the flights full, but at what cost? Dollar that we bought at about uh, a certain rate in five in uh, January, it's about reading about 580, yeah. and there's no forex to uh, official forex to actually take care of the dollar operations for domestic airlines to operate within Nigeria. I, I don't think the CBN governor will be happy to hear this because, I mean, uh, from his uh, various broadcasts and uh, even at the MPC, he talked about the fact that uh, the banks are getting more supply, you know, to handle this. So is it that the, the airlines or the aviation industry is not going to the bank or what's going on? They're going to the bank. And let's start with the 143.8 billion that's been uh, for the foreign airlines. It's still, as at August, to the best of my knowledge, it's still uh, what pending. it's outspending. It's still pending with the CBN, with the international airlines. So now on the domestic side, we still have uh, a major airline that has 22 aircraft, and each of those aircraft are abroad, are being taken care of. They need to pay for the maintenance and the checks, and this needs to be funded in Forex. For the forex availability, we are not able to match that. There might be, but this, this, the volume is what I don't think we're able to meet at this time. So we have that forex uh, uh, challenge. So is the aviation, uh, uh, do you have stakeholders having conversations with the CBN or are you just dealing with the banks? We have, we, uh, prior to this time, we had a, pref a preferential, uh, preferential rate, but obviously uh, even the preferential rates are not available at this time. So hopefully with the increase in price of oil, we'll be able to have enough funding. But we, aviation is largely, even 70-80%, the determined by Forex. Jet A1, which is 40% of our operations, is our import for kerosene, which is Jet A1 fuel, is actually imported. As at last week, it was about 300 naira per liter of Jet A1. And you have to fill all your tanks. So if you're looking about 40,000 liters to Abuja and another 40,000 liters averagely back to Lagos, that's a huge cost at 300,000. And that is if you're doing Abuja. If you're going to uplift your fuel in my degree, uh, up, it's higher cost. So that's, that's just the operational part. Then we start talking about maintenance, spares, all your training, capacity improvement. All these are domiciled in Forex, and we don't have that Forex. So that is actually affecting operations now. So what should be done? I don't like just reeling out the challenges. Exactly, yes. What should be done at this point? It's the fact that let's open up the economy. Yes, we're talking about lots of ascendancy about people traveling. Yes, COVID is the new reality. How do we live with travel post-COVID? Now we have lots of travel restrictions. We have had since, I think, April, lots of restrictions for major countries. For example, India, South Africa, Turkey, and um, uh, You still Brazil. have the one with the UAE. Yes, we still. <laughs> so we have all these restrictions. Don't forget that, as a, according to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the Turkey and South Africa, Turkey has about uh, third quarter of 2020, Exports from Nigeria was about 5%, and uh, you, sorry, South Africa at about 6.28%. If we're looking about 11% of our exports, which is foreign exchange that we need at this time from these countries, why don't we open up within guided, uh, following best practice guidelines so that we can have people from these countries, which are, by the way, highly vaccinated, have low rates of uh, uh, COVID infections so that we have a very calculated and evidently uh, pla uh, a good platform for them to actually see people come in, isolate and well treated, and they can do business and we can improve the foreign direct investment. Or, or is it that we don't really trust our enforcement system at the airports? Well, it, it's not, if we're having a lot of the inf in, in, uh, in, uh, inflow, we ensure that the enforcement system, the ecosystem is not just the airport. We see the airline, and they were actually being penalized by putting a $3,500 penalty. And they ensure that those that have had double vaccinated and those that have the right papers come into Nigeria. 
But we need this investment at this time. So may maybe the government is also, uh, you know, working on is it the retaliation policy or something. For instance, that the UK have said, even when you are double vaccinated from Nigeria, you still get to the UK, you have to isolate, you know, and things like that. Perhaps those, those are some of the things guiding the government's decision not to fully open up. Yes, it's, and it's what the uh, US has actually put as a prerequisite, as a guideline for those coming to the uh, US from Europe as well. What is it's when we live in a global environment? What has been the solution? The solution is for Nigeria to have a platform, a database of those that won from end to end of won the vaccine as it comes in. Who takes that vaccine? It's automated and it's actually linked into a database. IATA has one now, it's called the IATA Travel Pass. So that once your, your vaccine and your card is registered on that application, you can travel globally and you don't have to be isolated. That opens up travel uh, markets globally. That actually ensures that no, you don't have to isolate. So, so what, I, what I hear you say here is, perhaps are you saying that Nigeria is not managing its vaccinated uh, individuals' data well? We're not sharing it or we're not linking it. Is that why you think that... That data should be, going, it should be validated and just right through a process okay. whereby that process can integrate either to basic processes across global entities. And this is what will make people be able to So why verify. are we not doing that? So, we've, again, we're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. You remember when we had security challenges of Abd Abdul Mutalab? Yes. We called the Advanced Passenger Information System. We still, actually, it's not part of us. When you're traveling to the U.S., when you buy your ticket, your information is actually sent from the travel airline's travel system to a home security system to verify that you're not a threat to their system. If you're a threat, they will not let you even board from here. So it's the same mechanism. It's the same process. Have a system, a verified or to because, uh, uh, system here that is verified. And you're able to actually verify that norm in a system with international known system. And then you're able to prove that those that are vaccinated and it's the real vaccination because we have the black market. It's the reality of... We have of, the black market of vaccine again. Yes. We have the black man. And it's not just Nigeria. We saw that <laughs> being destroyed in South Africa yes, the other day. Yes, yes. So it's, uh, when people say it's Nigeria, no. We have it across glo globally. So it's just a human natural tendency. But we, we actually put this as the front burner of the Nigerian way. We have the good, it's 80% good in Nigeria. So we, let's have that 80% push forward to the front burner. And we actually have to have these people show that they are vaccinated they can go into Britain without isolation. Whose responsibility is it to push for this? I believe I, people always say government. We are the government. The government, the government, uh, the government uh, entities, MDs, which um, the, the the entity that takes care of the vaccination, the Nigerian uh, Civil Health. Aviation Authority, because they, where they travel, the Port Health is part of this. And it's just a coalition of all these government entities because at the moment the presidential tax force is uh, uh, belittled, is actually has that responsibility at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the tra presidential tax force can take this as one of the roles to make sure that so, uh, this is done and that opens travel to Nigeria, in and out of Nigeria. For and Nigeria. that will also help our foreign exchange situation. Exactly. I mean, because if we're able to open up, then we can have more forex and... Hope we don't get blacklisted. <laughs> exactly. And we need to meet up that World Bank uh, numbers of 2.4. So it's not just numbers. It's not it becomes, just a number. It becomes a reality. Well, we do hope we'll meet up. Thank you so much, it's Mr. Jeremy Satayo. Jury is a managing partner with Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. My pleasure. So um, after the break, commodities market update is next. And he talked about uh, the World Bank growth forecast. We we'll also mentioned that. So stay with us. It's Business Morning on Channels Television.